Ramesh ji. Namaste, everybody. I'm uh, I'm honored uh, for the double honor um, of being Dr. Balamurli Krishna's student on one hand and uh, and an educator with close ties to HLC, our host uh, today. So it is a matter of honor and pride that um, HLC is hosting this event. Um, my uh, talk, while it will be interactive eventually, depending on the time we have left, uh, is um, aimed to cover some ground. So the first 10 to 15 minutes maybe will be um, um, my uh, understanding of my guru um, about the bond between guru and sishya in general terms and in very specific uh, terms between myself and my guruji um, i wanted to talk about the modes of art transmission that guruji employed in uh, enabling his students to pursue and persevere and uh, transcend in the field of music and uh, with that as the backdrop let me start with a, a couplet in in Tamil we call couplets as kurals. Um, this is not Tirukural, this is Sirikural. It is uh, uh, written by me. Um, these uh, couplets will pepper my discussion uh, and uh, try and bring a little poetic focus into the material that I'll be presenting. Um, the first couplet means Stop scratching it doesn't look nice at all. Is there an equal to the guru wide and far? Is there an equal to the guru wide and far? In showering grace, he sets the high bar. This couplet in the Tamil language Guru Nigar Woolaro Perindarani Le Guru Nigar Woolaro Perindarani Le Harul Marai Podium Aver Kinai Avare Harul Marai Podium our kinney, our guru nigger wooler. This raga is Hamsa Vinodani, one of Guruji's discoveries. Sariga Madani, Sani the Magari. Guruji was a consummate teacher, and any teacher that can be called a guru is endowed with the power to give and give limitlessly the ideal teacher and only the ideal teacher can be called the guru and he or she is described as one with magnanimity maha anubhavatva as an overriding attribute even the most deserving student that is sishya is limited in his or her capacity to receive, depending on one's ability and environment, as we say, nature and nurture in education. And uh, I will be uh, upfront here. I was probably not his most deserving Sishya by a mile. However, I was inspired by him. He lives in my memory and he helps stay inspired and committed to the art. Having said that, I wanted to describe the bond between the Guru and the Sishya in generic, in general, and in specific terms. Um, the Guru-Sishya bond is special and uh, it is chosen by circumstance and nurtured by grace, what we call Guru Kripa. This grace is to be experienced. It is not fully communicable in words. In an effort to give others glimpses of Guru Kripa, we have first person accounts such as the one that I'm sharing with you today. And even these accounts are going to be poor substitutes for the direct experience because they are filtered through the dual lens of memory and expression. And they are prone to understatement and worse still, they are very prone to exaggeration. Amidst all these failings, they still give a glimpse of the real deal. The real deal 
in in the guru kripa world is what i call nija bhakti uh, a couplet on nija bhakti in the raga sumukham sari mani sani mari sa nij bhakti budayor evar ninum tame nij bhakti budayor evar ninum tame nichamum vidaye swachamai varangum nichamum vidaye swachamai varangum guru nigarvularo perundaraniyile guru nigar ularo those with true devotion nija daily grant untainted knowledge now in this interaction that i must thank uh, this great master series of speak make for especially thank you dr ramesh for making this a uh, reality i'm sure to be beset by my own conscious and subconscious agendas they're going to color and distort my atoms while i grapple with these subjective biases and failings i'll try to keep my eye on my target which is to describe the modes the modes that guruji employed to transmit his art and how he shaped my music and my overall perspective not just limited to music but to life in general honing my skill and expanding my understanding and how he continues to influence me from the beyond and the very first thing that one thinks of when they think of my guru is what a voice what a great voice so the first mode of transmission that i experienced with guru is voice the couplet is in the raga sarvashri samapa sapama sa just three notes suralayani puna kural nayani mal suralaya nipuna kural naya nimal palakalai sarala paramanand guru nigarvularo perundarani le deep in his understanding of music and voice vested in the arts he is joy and he is poise so when it came to the voice which was guruji's forte and uh, his the crowning glory in his uh, 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 arsenal of skills guruji was very fond of a nice crisp voice production devoid of cracks devoid of vocalisms he demanded wished longed for the best of every practitioner in the chosen range so when i say chosen range he was endowed with a phenomenal voice range but he did not think that the ability of a student to sing the mantra stai or the uchcha stai or any specific pitch was of primal importance as an example when i joined him i was 11 i was a little child just over a tike and i would sing the shruti a in carnatic music that is called arkata 6 on the shruti box definitely a female pitch and many people will attend my programs thinking it is a young woman on stage by the time i finished my graduation my undergraduate at iitm and took for reasons beyond my control a long hiatus from music i was singing in the same a or a sharp but one whole octave lower that was the amount of uh, change that i had uh, you could say encountered suffered uh, went through over my 10 years with guruji um but the beauty about him was no matter what my pitch was during that journey with him he would sing with the same beautiful timbre so his sa pa sa mantra stai panchamam 
Tarastai Panchamam, the range was intact. And more importantly, the thomber was intact. So you could always tell that it was Balamurli Krishna singing. It was never a distortion of voice. And for this extreme um, mindfulness uh, was demanded. And uh, this was something that he, even though he would not necessarily name in words, you learned a lot by imitation. And this was something that I had the fortune of imitating from a young age. And while they say that imitation is merely flattery, I would dare you to try and imitate Balamurli Krishna's voice. And uh, with that grace, um, he combined a love for instrumental music. So my next uh, mode of transmission is through the instruments. Um, he had a, a, a sound reason for why he took up the violin. Uh, for a, almost an entire year, while his voice was changing, he stopped singing in concerts. What he did instead was casually picked up the nearest instrument that was available to him, which was a violin, and started playing. So he was completely self-made, self-trained on the violin. And uh, if you have ever heard Balamurli on the violin, you would think it was probably Dwara Venkata Swami Nayadu. That was the level of proficiency. He played as well as the greatest professional of the art. Um, so he had uncanny mastery over his instrument, even though it demanded great rigor. Ask me, I have learned violin for years and I'm nowhere close to mastery or perfection. But his skill, while it all may, always seemed a little too much, a little unreachable, was always inspiring. The kanjira and the mridangam were the other two instruments that he was master of. Um, that he played on rare occasion, but whenever he played, he produced outstanding music. Um, so, as a dutiful Sishya, I tried my hand on the violin, I tried my hand on the kanjira, but as my tendencies and my vasanas uh, took me, they took me away from those instruments and ended up with the skill set on a, a whole slew of other instruments besides mainly on the wind instruments. And for that, I do not know. That is a completely different topic why that happened. Um, now, the third transmission mode is the art of tuning. I call it tune smithy. Uh, in Tamil, we call it metu. And um, I'm going to give you my next uh, uh, e-ready uh, couplet on metu. This is in the Raga Siddhi. Sari Pada Sada Pari Metu Pala Said Melor Potri Dum Metu Pala Said Melor Potri Dum Yet to see the Yet to see Metta maitu yettiya Guru nigar vularo Perundara niile Guru nigar vularo The praiseworthy tunes he produced are purchases that did eight siddhis induce. That was the meaning. Um, in terms of his approach to tuning, uh, the introduction uh, pointed out Badrachala Ramadasa and Anamacharya and some of those other great um, poets that he has tuned. Now, interestingly, he has retuned many of those tunes uh, that were considered universal, considered standard, sacrosanct. Uh, and he had a very sound reasoning. He said, look at the Sahitya Bhava of the song. <clears throat> look at how the song is playing out in the mind of this of the original poet use that poetic intent as a guideline for your tune so he transmitted not only the tune but the method behind the tune um, so he let the lyrics tell the story through the music and irrespective of the stage of development he asked his students to be sensitive to not only the words and the meanings to down to the individual letters so in an alapana, it's a good example. 
uh, are counter examples and he will actually illustrate these examples and counter examples and they'll be usually accompanied with a fair burst of laughter all around because while guruji sang like guruji he could sing like any other musician so these were some of the more light hearted moments but he had a point to um, convey which was how to sing and how not to sing down to the last letter of um, the the idiom or the alphabet now um, the next one is writing songs as you all know guruji has uh, composed and written songs prol prolifically he is a great poet himself um, in his uh, composition in his uh, songwriting there was no separate writing setting tuning it all came out as a whole so as a student i have observed songs that pop in full finished format and uh, one famous example that is available to the public is his tuning of the song in uh, in the raga dorai so this was a famous incident in the 70s where the great vainika dorasami ayangar asked him uh, almost whimsically to sing a raga that he had just given the scale of guruji not only sang the raga but he sang a whole composition he invented a new thala and everything was done on stage live in front of a big audience so there was nothing separated from him the lyrics came with the music came with the uh, thala and uh, he asked for vagya karas to look for divinity in everything not just in godly bhakti but have the bhakti bhava in everything and this ties up with this aesthetic of music which i will come into um, exploring in a bit uh, later he was very particular about the mastery of language so he was uh, he wanted everybody to take care about pronunciation and also the understanding of the lyrics so while uh, we were taught the songs we were also taught the meaning which now in retrospect was one of the most wonderful gifts that guruji had given us and even his speeches for for those who have observed him had a subtle lyrical quality to him um the next mode is this new fangled mode of recording music which probably did not exist be before his um uh, generation so um he uh, produced countless records he's probably the most prolific carnatic musician till date in across categories to have produced thousands upon thousands of songs and albums um so a couplet to honor this um sare ma da sa da ma re sa lavangi tatile it ar suvaidanai isai tatile it ar suvaidanai isai tatilittu தங்க தட்டு பல படைத்த குரு நிகர் like the plated six tastes of old he made tasteful records that reached gold um guruji uh, and uh, and the plate uh, brings a memory to me he was fond of good food um and uh, good music so he had diverse taste to the to the level of Uh, that a vegetarian south indian palate can support uh, his recording studios forays are legendary anybody who has accompanied with him uh, would have would come out of the studio jaws dropped and this includes the likes of hari prasad ji and ilaraja ji they are all stunned at the rate at which guruji uh, simulates and produces there is no retake in guruji's recordings very rarely have there been an instance of guruji being asked to do a song again it is not only a, a symbol of the man's stature but also his felicity with being able to produce exactly what the music director wants to hear he had a love for film music which is actually very pertinent to mention here because in there uh, he said uh, he would say the vadya vrinda the way the the instruments are arranged 
need to be very sensitive to the music and uh, his radio arrangements are very famous uh, they were called bhakti ranjani and he probably introduced the whole idea of a regular musical orchestral arrangement of uh, songs um so he seemed to have an uncanny understanding of mass media before the advent of social media um truly a man ahead of his times now um let me squeeze in the rest collaboration somebody mentioned jugalbandis um he would tell me not to worry about regional differences and this actually this advice uh, helped me a lot because i am very deeply invested in hindustani music too and i learned to play the bansuri uh, in the hindustani style uh, because guruji did not make a big uh, hue and cry about the differences between the systems uh postulating indian the, instead that the indian system of music evolved without a north south divide for most of its existence so we are talking about thousands of years what is a century or two let us have a common perspective that was his pitch um he would say mohanam and bhopali hindolam and malkons these are just names for the same timeless ragas uh, so that that uh, struck a tone and uh, and a chord in us uh, in the students um so when it comes to this north south a couplet for you sari ga ma ma da ni sa ni da ma da ma ma ga re sa rohini vadak tirkin ka inda pilavi nai vadak tirkin ka inda pilavi nai kadakum vagai padta bharadiya sangeeta guru nigar vularo transcending the raw north south debate his music was fruit that does bharat set uh, i want to pedagogy the act uh, of uh, ramesh music uh, ramesh ji you are trying to talk and uh, you are muted uh, one minute i cannot listen i can't hear you ramesh ji ramesh ji you are muted you are muted yeah so uh, i got i was just looking at the time we have we have a one oh I'm sorry video, my, uh, my, my, my screen is turned off give me one second yeah yeah so i'm just sorry i have got it i have a one hour video give me i'm second. looking at the time yes ramesh ji Sorry. Yeah. So sorry, Raghuji. I it's going wonderfully well. I'm just looking at the time. Raghuji, we have a one-hour video, so I'm just looking at uh, uh, the question answers and the video and the you know the, the time which we need to stick on. Uh, we have Raghuji, already uh, overshot the time, I believe. Okay. So uh, can we leave out the questions right now and we go for the video straight okay. away? Okay. 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 It's true. Thank you. there is a, a conclusion and uh, my conclusion is that guruji empowered and emboldened his students and he continues to inspire many generations of sadhakas and uh, his um, his youthful looks and his universal outlook and his poetry uh, all demands and uh, deserves scrutiny over the next generations to come thank you very much So, Rinkuji, uh, I think you can request uh, Abhishek to start. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very much. Okay. Good evening to all of you present here this evening. What a scintillating and rich experience of listening to music by the Doyen and. couplets dedicated to his guru by his favorite disciple information gathering and understanding of the nuances of music 
the last two hours have been. We would like to profusely thank Spick McKay for bringing out this series, Great Masters, to take music to the younger generation of today and to enlighten them about the great works of celebrities in their field of work. We also thank Dr. Subhash Chandra Parija, an internationally acclaimed parasitologist who, amidst his busy schedule, had kindly consented to be the chief guest for this evening's program. We are greatly honored that both Spick McKay and Mr. Raghavan Manian chose HLC for spreading the importance of music in our lives. Our association with Spick McKay goes a long way back with their great shows that have given some rich experiences for the students and facilitators at HLC. We would also like to thank IIT Delhi, Dr. Kiran Se, Mr. Hemant Tutra, and all the coordinators for being, bringing out this wonderful show. Dr. Balamurli Krishna is one of the greatest musicians of all times. He was not only a musician, but was also an innovator of ragas and talas, composer of songs, and adept at playing the viola, ganjira, and mridangam, showcasing holistic development. It is unlikely that many houses would have missed reverberating with his ringing voice at some time or the other. When we heard that Mr. Raghavan Manian was going to host this show on behalf of Spit McKay, it filled us with even more joy, and we thought, what a fitting selection it was. Because we knew that Dr. Balamurli Krishna was Raghavan Manian's guru, and that Raghavan was one of his favorite students. Following his guru's footsteps, Raghavan has also accomplished himself to be as versatile a person as his guru, practicing not only singing, but also playing several instruments, besides researching and connecting many subjects we learn at school to music. He is the Pied Piper of HLC. As soon as he arrives, all the children would throng around him to know what it was that they were going to learn new that day. Like Spick McKay, Raghavan is also committed to taking music to the younger generation in a way most appealing to them. A big thanks to Raghavan for giving HLC his valuable time and enlightening us today about his journey with Guruji. I was greatly impressed with Sumana's invocation singing. She is a disciple of yet another great singer. I hope she spreads her wings far and wide as a renowned singer in future. A special thanks to Biba, Sanvi, Driti, and Shruti for their great deliveries. Thank you, Lakshmi for coordinating with Spick McKay, Raghavan, and the students for making this a memorable program and for your introductory speech. Thank you, Mr. Ramesh, also. Now, however, we, I would like to hand over the uh, session to Shruti, who was all well prepared, but could not uh, deliver because she could not unmute herself at that time. So I would like all of you to listen to Shruti also, please. Thank you so much. <laughs> 